hi and welcome to another youtube video so in today's video we are going to be talking about the concept of descriptive statistics but from the numerical standpoint i mentioned it earlier that we actually have two branches of descriptive statistics we have what we call the visual measure aka the data visualization and this is where we use tools like the bar charts pie charts the histogram to actually tell a story about our data set and then we have the concept of the numerical measure where we actually use numbers and uh, a bit of mathematics to actually tell a story about our data set so to understand this concept very well i will quickly enter excel and try to use uh, a simple data set to explain the concept of numerical analysis so let's get into excel So let's take a look at this simple data set uh, let's assume we want to consider profit which is one of the variables in this data set and we want to get the descriptive statistics all we have to do is to select all of the data sets like this or you can also do like this then you come to data uh, you come to data analysis and then you click on descriptive statistics and it asks you some couple of questions your input range and that is going to be between this down to this uh, it's going to ask you your output range and the summary statistics so this is what we actually really need uh, we click on the summary statistics we don't need the confidence interval the confidence level rather for the mean uh, it's not needed right now we might also be interested in knowing the smallest value and the largest value so i can just click that um, i want this to be pasted in the new worksheet and then boom it gives us something like this this is the descriptive statistics of our data set. It gives us the mean, the standard error, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, everything we need to know down to the count, the largest and the smallest. So when it comes to descriptive statistics and the usage of numerical analysis, we actually have uh, two details. We have what we call the measure of central tendency, also known as the measure of central location. And these uh, details actually help us to locate the center of our data set. We're thinking about the mean, the median and the mode. And we have what we call the measure of dispersion or the measure of spread. And these uh, details basically help us to define the spread of our data set. We have things like uh, the mean absolute deviation, we have the variance, we have the standard division, and we have the range. Under the range, we actually have uh, things like the interquartile range, the semi interquartile range also so let me try to explain each of those details so basically the mean is actually the average of the data set in simple mathematics formula the mean is basically the sum of all the variables present in that data set divided by the size of the data set the median is actually the middle value located in the data set we can see the median as the center point of the data set the mode on the other hand is actually the uh, the variable that actually has the highest number of occurrence and that is all when we combine the value of the mean the median and the mode together we can actually be able to tell uh, more stories about our data set and these stories include things like courtesies and skewness which i think i am going to uh, you know try to talk about more in later videos the concept of the mean absolute division is just a way of measuring the spread of our data set but by using absolute values earlier on mathematicians were able to realize that the concept of absolute values was actually not enough to determine the spread of a data set so what did they do and they were like how about we squared deviations of mean this is actually going to give us uh, something more tangible and from the mathematical standpoint the squared uh, the sum of the squared of the deviations is actually known as the variance and the square root of the variance is actually uh, the standard division. The range is actually one of the simplest way of knowing the width of a data set because it is simply the difference between the highest value data and the lowest uh, value data. In as much as the median is actually seen as the center of the data set, we actually don't use the median to determine the center of the data set because uh, the median is kind of uh, a qualitative approach. It, it's not using the actual value of the data set to actually get the center of the data set. It's actually using the position. So this is going to have a lot of effect on the calculation so rather statisticians actually prefer to use the mean of a data set to actually uh, define the center of a data set the center of a data set is actually very important to us in mathematics because it is the 50 percent we mark at the 50 percent mark of the distribution you can actually be able to tell whether a data set is uh, symmetric or not and this is one of the basis of the concept of hypothesis testing and normal distribution i know you are asking yourself this question so how can the mean be the center of a data set so i'll give you just a simple example let's assume we have five sample data we have two three two three and four i want to prove that the mean of this data set can actually act at the center so obviously to calculate the mean uh the answer to that is going to be two plus three plus two plus three plus four divided by five ab and that is going to give us 2.8 so 2.8 is actually the average value of this data set if you try to rearrange your data set in ascending order meaning from the lowest down to the highest we're going to be having two two three three and four 
now try to locate or try to position the mean which is 2.8 uh, around this data set you will realize that 2.8 is actually uh, between the two threes that we have and that is we can see it is approximately three as you can see 2.8 is actually located in the center of the data set so this is one very important property of the mean in as much as the center of a data set the 50 percent mark is actually very important to us on statistics we also need to realize that there are other points in a data set that we kind of pay attention to we have things like the quartiles we have the percentiles and we have the details so for quartiles you are basically dividing our data set into four equal parts we have the first quarter which represents the first 25 percent we have the second quarter which represents uh, the at the 50 percent mark which is also like the median we have the third quarter which is the uh, 75 percent mark this cells actually divide the data into 10 equal parts we have the first this out the second this out the third this out down to the ninth this out the first this is the uh the first 10 percent of the data set the second this is the first 20 percent the third this is the first 30 percent and we also have the percentile which divides the distribution into 100 uh different parts so that means we have the p1 the p2 the p3 you know that's the first percentile the second percentile the fourth percentile the p20 is the 20th percentile which represents the first 20 percent of the distribution all of these details are very important to us when it comes to proper numerical analysis if you enjoyed this video and you learned something new from this video i would really appreciate it if you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel do you think i missed something or you have some questions for me please don't hesitate to go into the comment section and drop those questions of yours i would definitely attend to them do you need some videos about the concept of data visualization i have a video right here for you that you can check or do you need to know more about the types of data sets that we have and statistics i also have a video right here for you that you can just go check out thanks for making it to the end of this video and we we'll see you in the next one bye for now